what can we learn from our bowel movements? Yeah, well, you know, let me let me uh, first uh, lay out a disclaimer, which is that I talk about poop for a living. This is literally <laughs> what I do from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. And then I go home and I play with my four-year-old son. And guess what a four-year-old boy wants to talk about? He wants to talk about poop. So, and then, and then many times I'll be teaching the class after that and we're talking about poop again. So the bottom line is I am immersed in this world <laughs> where this is what I talk about. And I feel very comfortable with it. And I hope that the people at home don't judge me for it, but whatever, it is what it is. This is what I do. Um, you know, I think it's interesting and, and in all seriousness, you know, we, I understand that we're not necessarily going to have open conversations with uh, people that we barely know about what our bowel movements are like, but every single one of us poops, right? Every single, uh, I mean, my, I'm not sure if my wife poops, but other than that, the rest <laughs> of us poop. And the the reality is that this is a window of insight into the health of our gut of our gut microbiome 70 percent of the weight of our stool are actually microbes which is crazy because i went through medical school and if you asked me when i was done i would have told you that our stool is made up of the excrement of the food that we eat whatever waste we don't need, we just, we just discard it. That's not true. That only constitutes 30% of the weight of our stool. 70% of it are the gut microbes. And so what that means is that the poop is our window, our insight into the health of our gut microbiome. And just like we have the vital signs, our heart rate, our blood pressure, you know, our respiratory rate in the same way, we should be looking at this because if you think that gut health matters, and I do, you know, I think that gut health is revolutionizing the way that we think about human health. If you think it matters, then we should be paying attention to this. So this is something that is a great opportunity. All it takes is literally a basic understanding of what to look for in the toilet bowl. Okay, so it seems that a lot of people, a lot of the population, even judging from nightly news and the ads that come on. A lot of people are constipated. So let's talk about constipation and maybe get into what, how many times a day or a week should somebody, somebody take a poop and what constitutes constipation? And then I'm just gonna add on to what would you do first line of defense if you had constipation? I mean, I know there's a lot of, you know, pills and drugs, whatever, but what's the first thing you would do if you had constipation? But backing up, what is, how many days, how many times a day or a week should we be pooping? All right, so let me, let me preface by saying this, that I am always a little bit reluctant to assign a number per se, because to me it's not, I don't define constipation by a number in terms of how many bowel uh, movements you have per week. I define constipation based upon whether or not you are having complete regular evacuations of your bowels. And as a result, your gut is thriving and you are not suffering any symptoms. All right, so to me, constipation is the opposite of that. Constipation is the inadequate release, the inadequate evacuation of our bowels. And because it's inadequate, we are suffering symptoms as a result of that. So there, Kathy, there are people who poop every day and, they're, and they are constipated. And the way that that works is that while they may poop every day, they are not completely evacuating. And if they poop 70% of it out, but they trap 30%, that 30% will compound day by day by day and very quickly within a few days, they will be completely full of it. They will be completely full of it and they will be suffering with constipation. All right, so to me, it's not a number. That being said, the average person in the United States typically poops once a day. I actually feel like we have normalized abnormal. And that actually gets back to our low fiber diet. The average person in the US is only consuming 15 grams of fiber. That's actually pathetically low. You know, for women, we recommend 25 grams. For men, 38 grams. 97% of Americans are not even getting the minimal amount of fiber in their diet. And when you get more fiber, what do you have? 
you have more bowel movements. Why do you have more bowel movements? Because it goes back to Kathy, 70% of our bowel movement is our microbes. And so when you consume more fiber, you are breeding more microbes. And when you breed more microbes, you have more bowel movements. All right. So if we were all consuming an adequate amount of fiber, I do honestly believe that we would have two to three bowel movements per day. Um, but that being said, um, you know, you could have a bowel movement every other day. And if it is a complete total evacuation and you feel well, you are thriving, you have no digestive symptoms, then you are not constipated, even though you go every other day. And on the flip side, the person who goes every day and has symptoms, gas, bloating, abdominal discomfort, uh, fatigue, nausea, uh, acid reflux, they get full very quickly. They're, you know, they lose their appetite. Those are the symptoms of constipation. That person's constipated, even though they're pooping every day because they're not completely empty. So when it comes to treatment of constipation, I think that, you know, probably the most important thing that I could get across to your audience when it comes to treatment of constipation is to be wary of the treatments that are available over the counter for constipation particularly, I hate to say this because I'm a big believer in natural therapies, but particularly the natural therapies because those are stimulant laxatives. So what I'm talking about is Senna, Senecot, Smooth Move Tea, Aloe Vera, Cascara, Trifala. All of these things are actually stimulant laxatives. And what stimulant laxatives do is your body becomes habituated to them. You then need them in the future to have a bowel movement. You become addicted in a way. And the problem is if you withdraw this laxative after taking it chronically, you will be more constipated than you've ever been in your entire life. So I would really encourage people to not use these types of laxatives routinely. What do I do in my clinic? To me, it is about rhythm. It is about getting my patients into a good bowel rhythm. So many times I'm able to accomplish that by using a combination of magnesium, which I will typically have my, my patients take before bedtime uh, because magnesium is also good for sleep. It's good for anxiety. It's good for migraine headaches. Um, it is not a stimulant laxative. It is not addictive. So I have them take magnesium before bedtime. And then I will typically also add in a fiber supplement in the morning, many times with their morning coffee. So that's the typical approach that I'll take.